For 16 years, we've been building a site that's been called innovative, insightful, and informative. Now there's a new name for it. We're now NBCNews.com. It's horrible. I mean, it's... I, I, I don't even know how, how to explain uh, having a microscope go into your world. It's surreal. There are few secrets in a person's life that can escape the attention of a determined homicide detective. Everything comes out. Absolutely everything. And Dale and Stephanie, it turned out, have their share of secrets. Like the weird thing, one chilly morning six weeks before Stephanie was murdered, as Stephanie told her friend Jennifer. She heard spanking. And um, she, she told me she counted at least eight spanks before she got up the stairs and down the hall to the kitchen. Well, my boy was acting out far beyond, you know, the norm. And I said, come on. That was a Wednesday morning. Stephanie was furious about the spanking and stormed off to work. And that very day was laid off from her county job. And then, still upset with Dale, Stephanie went to see a judge and filed a restraining order against him, sought advice from her friend, Bill. Honestly, I was, I was a little bit surprised. I had never detected any major problems in their relationship. But, and this was distinctly odd, she asked the court to delay implementing the order until the following Monday. And then she went home and, said Dale, suggested that family holiday. We had a, a wonderful weekend at the, at the Hotel Colorado and the hot springs swimming with the kids. But then, back in town is when Stephanie revealed, one, that she was in love with another man, and two, her restraining order was about to be served. She told me that, uh, you know, the sheriff's department was gonna come to the house and uh, I'm gonna have to leave. So he did. After which, said Dale, they calmed down and 10 days later went back to ask the judge to rescind his order. The court recorded the session. I'm never gonna spank again. This this potentially could crush my entire world. <laughs> and I'm so sorry to you. And I will make it up in any and every way I possibly can. She wanted to leave, but she felt like the restraining order was, was too much, that, that Dale didn't deserve that, and that maybe she had overreacted. And so they talked about it like adults. And eventually they signed divorce papers, and Dale even helped Stephanie move into her condo, where... As you know, the very night she moved in, her new love, Ron, told her the affair was over. They weren't going to be together, not then, not ever. He was staying with his wife. Two days later, she was dead. And Ron and his wife and Dale were all under suspicion. They said I was a person of interest. and I, I didn't think I had any worries. But Agent Sadar wasn't so sure. As his investigation continued, he became convinced that Ron Holthouse and his wife, Cindy, had been telling him the truth. I feel awful. I really feel awful. But he kept encountering suspicious things about Dale. Why had Dale waited until morning to report his wife missing? And why, while well, Dale's friends and family scoured the town looking for her, why didn't he take part at all? It was kind of this mounting series of things that we started to right. be concerned about. And it was Dale, said Sadar, who had motive and opportunity. For one thing, the place they found her body, Dale could certainly have carried her that far. Yeah, we were struck by how close it is to the house and, uh, and how accessible it was, even under those, uh, those snowy conditions. Yeah. And when Dale was still talking before he lawyered up, his demeanor seemed well, odd to the detective. One of their meetings at a local restaurant was recorded. Well, what happened to her then? Well, we're, that's what I'm talking to you about. Very, very probative. He wanted to know what we had learned from the autopsy, um, where we were going with the investigation. Just a little wigged out when you said there was no other clothes on her. I can lie to you. I have some concerns. I'm being very open and honest with you. What the hell yeah. happened to her? I mean, well, that's what I'd like to find out. He was nervous but not outwardly sad. And then, two weeks after the murder, when Detective Sater got a search warrant, a house that had been cluttered at the time of the murder was now spotless. What'd you find this time? Nothing, there was nothing to find. There were no signs of blood, no evidence of any struggle, nor, in fact, 
Was there any sign that Stephanie had ever lived there? There wasn't a single photograph of her. Every trace of her had been scrubbed from the house. It also seemed suspicious, said the detective, that Dale changed his story a bit. First time he called the police, he said they'd had an argument before she left to go out walking. Later, he said there was no argument. Okay, was there an argument no, today, then? we never had an argument. There was no argument. It was just the, the facts were on the table. What, what were you guys talking about that she needed to clear her head? We were just talking about us. Within a few weeks of Stephanie's murder, the state ramped up the pressure on Dale. Social services sent the Bruner children to live with Stephanie's brother in California. I, I'm in a, a fight with Mike Tyson with no gloves. <laughs> and then they're going to take my kids away too? Dale wasn't completely alone, mind you. Some family stayed around, reported back to Stephanie's sister Ramona that Dale was truly grieving. And we kept asking, what is Dale acting like? What is he saying? Unless he's some kind of actor that deserves some kind of Oscar performance, this guy really seems distraught. And Stephanie's friend Bill even moved in for two months to help out, console Dale. We were just trying to hold Dale together. He was having a very difficult time. Did you ever either confront him or say, come on, tell us what happened? He looked every one of us in the eye and said, I had nothing to do with this. I'm innocent. Dale, can you talk at all about the investigators only focusing on you? I hope they're investigating someone else. Didn't look like it. It was summer 2011, nine months after Stephanie's murder, when it happened. I was coming back from one of my photo shoots and a, a little unmarked car with a, a light on it flashed and a siren went, and they have guns drawn on me. Dale Bruner was charged with second degree murder in the death of his wife. He pleaded not guilty, posted bond, and was offered a plea deal by the DA's office. Why'd you turn it down? Because innocent people don't plea. Besides, now, said Dale, it was time to fight back. Coming up, probing questions and provocative answers. It's a very intimate crime. It's the sort of crime that husbands commit. Or should I say boyfriends? When Dateline continues.